So, guess what we have going on here? I am visiting a residential neighborhood just before sunrise. It's 5 in the morning. And look at this. There's a nice big paper wasp nest there, but these are bald-faced hornets. They're called hornets, but they're actually just wasps. And I'm showing you a wide shot here to show that they have built their nest right next to a driveway. And the homeowner is very worried because he has a granddaughter that rides her tricycle around and she recently discovered the hornets in the worst possible way. So a friend contacted me and asked if I could come and do something about it and I said sure. Leave them overnight, I'll come in the morning before sunrise and I'll just remove them if I'm allowed to clip off the branch. And that's what I'm going to show in this video here. Bald-faced hornets can have quite the attitude. I'm using two cameras. So as you watch the sequences, you'll see a secondary sequence that shows a different perspective. All I'm going to do is walk up to them. You can see they're flying in low light. Honeybees aren't out yet. Bald-faced hornets fly in low light. And by the time the colony has a lot of colony members, they can get very defensive this time of year. Now, if this was some place where there weren't children playing, you could just leave them until it gets really cold and eventually they'll just die out from the cold and the queens will go and do their thing. And I have the second camera there that I'm hand holding and that is a Sony AX100 for those who always want to know what to use. And uh, I'm just going to put these things in a bag. If you notice, I am wearing a protective bee suit because I'm going to sneak up on them, and by the time the bag gets around them, they won't have time to send out all of their defenders. A lot of people want to know, can you just cut out a nest like that and just relocate it so they can be happy somewhere else? Well, this time of year, their chances of survival are basically non-existent in a new location. But you could do that. You could clip the branch in such a way that you could reattach the branch somewhere in the woods, nice and safe and far away. The bags I'm going to put around them are heavy, thick, black industrial trash bags. You can leave them in the bag and you can put that in a freezer. If you have one of those horizontal deep freezes, it will kill them all in the space of about two hours. Don't take them out too early. It's amazing how they can survive the cold. So the other thing is, why aren't I using a flashlight or a spotlight on these things? Well, if you really hate someone, hand them a white flashlight and say, hey, come and help me take this hornet nest out. They will go right at that white light and you will alert them right away. And whoever's holding that light is going to be the recipient of many stings. So I'm just going to come in here with my nippers and we're going to clip this branch off. I want to save as much of it as I can because I'd like to dry it out once it's empty and hang it as an ornament or an educational tool. If you notice, there are many entrances here, and just like with a beehive, if you don't bump them and knock them around a lot, they really won't be on full alert. But if you come in here and bang into them or hit them with a stick or something, or neighborhood kids throw rocks at them, you're just asking for it. They have a nickname, Bullet Hornet, for a reason. They come at you like bullets and they sting hard. Don't forget too that they can spray their venom into the air. Sometimes people start coughing and uh, they don't understand why, but they fail to understand that they are spritzing venom into the air and people are breathing it in. So you should wear a full bee suit. You want to be well acquainted with venomous insects before you get into removing something like that. But look what we did. We didn't have to burn them, didn't have to spray them with any kind of insecticide. There are scouts returning that will eventually just find their own way. Some people want to know, hey, when the scouts come back, will they rebuild a nest? No, they don't. They just scour around a little bit and they will be on their own until they just expire naturally. They get their resources from the environment. They are nectar drinkers, but when they bring little food resources to the developing larvae there, normally other insect pests and even honeybees, by the way, they will feed them to their larvae and then the larvae will excrete a liquid that's a nutritional benefit to the foraging bald-faced hornets. This is going to give you a close look of the nest again and it shows you what it looked like from the top. If you tore a hole in this, they would have it repaired in a matter of minutes, unless it's a big hole. But they just uh, continue to make paper and they do that by collecting cellulose, chewing on exposed wood, dead wood, 
And what they do is they come and mix it with their saliva and they attach it. That's why we get all of these interesting lines of paper in their nest. So it is very interesting to look at. If they wouldn't sting you, uh, they would be just great to observe from a distance. The camera's having a tough time here Expo or focusing on that. But look at the top. Look at all these little vents through the top. Very interesting stuff. And of course, while the colony's active, uh, whenever there's any deterioration on a paper nest like this, they are constantly repairing and expanding it. And of course, there is brood comb inside in many disc levels. And this time of year, the queens will be coming out. So that's what you're going to start to see, and they're still raiding beehives and so on. And uh, again, it was just very easy, this entire process, from the time I showed up at this man's driveway and uh, found them. First of all, they were hard to spot because it was dark out and I didn't want to use a flashlight. But uh, start to finish, we're talking 10 minutes. Come in, clip them, bag them, put a uh, twist in the top of the bag and zip tie that shut and then put that bag inside another bag. You don't want to have these in your car while they are chewing through the first bag. As it turned out it was thick enough they did not get through it and they did not chew out even through the primary boundary, secondary boundary, second bag also zip tied. You want to be completely safe. Now by the time you start to bag you want to do that fairly quick and just be ready to drop them right in. I'll leave a link in the video description for the bag and for those who are interested in the cameras that I use I guess I will include a link to the Sony AX100 video camera. We use two of them for this and that's it. Pretty simple. And he was very pleased by the time they get up and have their breakfast all they noticed is that the uh, nest was gone and his yard is again safe for his granddaughter to ride her tricycle around. I hope you enjoyed it. Keep an eye out this time of year. Often, again, they start to build up their nests and they go really unnoticed. And uh, then suddenly by the time they are revealed, especially when fall comes and leaves start falling off, you'll see large nests like this in trees. Thanks for watching. Proceed with caution. Have a great weekend.